This episode of Blind Grading is going to be a little bit different because Tomas here on YouTube gave me a little challenge. He sent me a clip from, I think, an FPV drone that is neither Log and neither Rec. 709. So I'm assuming some kind of flat profile from Grow Pro. And he challenged me to grade it without any conversion at all. Now, the first purpose of the series was to grade using different conversion lots or different conversions in the cost based transform to try and get the best possible result and showing you how it would go about it without knowing what the camera was that it was shot with and what the log profile was. Now, in this one, we're gonna do a little bit different because we're gonna grade it all the way from basics and not using any conversion at all. And now this is not something that I would normally do. This is not something I've done for a very, very long time, ever since I actually realized that I needed to use conversion lot because I did do it very back in the beginning when I started grading. So I'm gonna do my best to get the most possible out of this image and make it look great. And if it's something that you wanna do for your clips as well, or you don't wanna use conversion, versions, then feel free to try it out as well. I haven't graded this clip before we're heading into it now, so this is the first time I'm going to give it a go, and we're just going to see what we can do with the clip. So with no more rambling, let's head into DaVinci Resolve. Inside DaVinci Resolve, the only thing I've done here is create a timeline that's matching the settings, 25 frames, and I've put in the clip here. And let's head into the color page here, and I'm just going to see what would be a nice hero frame. I feel like this is one of the brighter points, but it also has quite a lot of motion blur in it all the way around. So I'm just gonna see what we can find here. I think maybe we're gonna use something like this as our hero frame here. And now let's just build out a handful of notes that I'm gonna use to see what we can do with this grade. So I'm thinking to make it look nice, we definitely need some saturation and some contrast. So to get everything right in terms of balance and what we need, I'm gonna make one for contrast and I'll make one for saturation, which I normally would have later on in the tree. But in this case, we're going to do it earlier because I want to bring back some of that saturation in the image. We are going to go with some exposure changes and we are going to have some balance. This is going to be our starting point. So for contrast, I'm just going to have a look at where how it looks here. I am going to add a little bit of shadows and a little bit of highlights here. Just stretch out the clip a little bit more to push out the information. And a common notion that people think is that everything has to hit 100 or zero. That's not true only zero if there's something that's completely black and only 100 if there's something that's supposed to be pure white. And in this case, not. So we can see this already took it from this flat profile to something that looks a lot better just by adding a little bit of contrast, a little bit of a strong S-curve here. In terms of saturation, I'm gonna head into color space and say HSV, and I'm gonna turn off channel one, and channel three. And I'm just gonna use the gamma to make it easy on myself here. I'm gonna use the vector scope at the same time to see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit. Around two is usually a sweet spot. We just see we're getting a little bit more saturation into the image, just getting back some more of that color and stretching it out a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good. Now in terms of exposure, I think we did pretty good with just the contrast. So I might leave it alone for now, but let's just go through the whole clip here and see if anything changes and some things becomes too dark and too bright. Even in the darker areas here, I think it looks pretty good. So I don't think we need anything to be adjusted. And with the contrast, we actually didn't go above clipping either, even though we have some highlights here that are pretty strong. So I think we're pretty good. I think I'm gonna go back to this hero frame again here and just leave the exposure alone for now. Back in the vector scope, I'm just gonna have a look at how things look here. It is very yellowish on this side in the grass here and or ground whatever it is and we have some very blue in the sky and in the shadows here which is a nice contrast already kind of giving us that teal and orange look so not bad for starters now the only thing i want to see is we do have some people here in this case we don't have any skin tones and if we go here we don't really see any skin tones even if we did here it's going to be impossible to see if they're lying in the right place they actually are if we're hovering over the skin tone somewhat here we can see that they are lying somewhat in the right place here. So I don't think that's something that we're gonna work with necessarily. So for now, we're just gonna leave that alone as well. And that is kind of how I would go about it. So exposure and balance was not needed here. We've got something pretty good out of it. So just the contrast and saturation is already converting it into something that looks a lot better. So that is kind of how I would always start doing things and 
contrast is always my first step. So the saturation is really what brings it together. And that's usually what you see lacking in something that is not Rec. 79 from the start, is that you will have less contrast and less saturation because that is how the footage is compressed to retain as much information as possible. So from here, let's just work around with the primaries and the curves here a little bit, just to see what we can do and if we can get something nice out of it. And I kind of want to emphasize what we already have. So I'm going to add a little bit of teal in the shadows or in the lift here and remove a little bit of red, already giving us a little bit more of a cooler image of all. And then I'm going to try and kind of reduce that with the game. So I'm going to go with some red and a little bit less green, a little bit less blue, just kind of balance that out. And now we're getting a little bit cooler tones in the background and a little bit more warmth here. So we're reducing that coolness again a little bit. I'm not sure if that was enough. So I'm actually going to try and just stretch it a little bit more. I want to keep it around that yellow area. So I'm going to go a little bit up in the green. I'm just going to see where the sweet spot is for this. We don't want it to be too cool. So by adding a little bit of blue, we're still getting in a good spot here, I think. And then just gonna see if we wanna balance it out a little bit more, seeing where things are. I think this looks pretty good. We have more teal in the shadows here now. That looks a little bit better for me. And we have neutralized a little bit of that very strong yellow color here, which I also kind of like. So instead of working with the gamma as I normally do, in this case, it's just the lift and the gain to balance out the two edges of the blacks, which is the lift that's working up what's towards the gain and then the gain that is the white point moving down towards the lift of the black. With curves now, I think we are going to go in and say hue versus hue, just going to isolate these colors here a little bit maybe stretch them out a little bit more and also the blue tones here. I'm just going to see what I can do with them. So if I move this up, we can get it a little bit more orange. If we were to go with that very teal and orange look, we could kind of balance this in a little bit. See, I still want it to be a little bit towards that greener side. So pulling down the red side a little bit to pull it closer to the green and pulling the green up to not get it too close. I think that looks pretty good. And the teal, I kind of just want to make sure that that sits somewhere in the middle here just to give that very teal cool look, but still in the middle of the blues, maybe that was actually a little bit too much towards the blues, like this. Now we have this nice teal color and we should see it also in the shadows down here that with these two, we get a lot more of a teal look, which I think looks cool. And it actually is a nice balance for the shadows because in real life, when you're seeing the shadows, they will look cooler as well. So going back to our hero frame here, I think that might be what we're doing for this. I kind of like how the grass looks here. I don't want to make it too artificial or anything. So I'm pretty satisfied with what we have already, to be honest. We could try and play around with some masking, but since the camera is moving everywhere all the time, I'm not sure we would get a nice result out of this. So we could try and pull in a little bit more focus to the midground, but overall, I actually think it looks pretty good and we did almost nothing. So overall, this was a really easy clip to work with, to be honest. There wasn't that much we needed to do. This is with it off and this is with it on. I do feel like it works pretty well. So I'm actually surprised if you can't hear that, that it was so easy to get something nice out of this clip. I think we got a lot of contrast, a lot of nice tones and the balance between the colors were already pretty good. I like that teal and orange kind of look and I don't want to push things too far on either direction. So overall, I don't really know if there's anything more to do now. I wanted to make sure that it exports in Rec. 79. So I would just go into my color management and then say output color space, Rec. 79 Gamma 2.4. And hopefully that also renders it in the correct settings. So let's just kind of try and see if it also looks good after we export it. So we're just gonna do blind grading free here. And we are going to go with quick time and H265. And I'm gonna leave the rest on automatic just gonna have a look at how it renders out and if it still looks good afterwards because that's my biggest worry when I export it now that I didn't use a color space transform just to make sure that the colors doesn't mess up afterwards. So let's see how it did. Reveal in Finder. It does look a little bit more contrasted I think but overall you still have a pretty good look so we could ease up on the contrast a little bit, but it doesn't look like we're losing all the shadows. And I think everything still looks pretty decent. So 
I wouldn't be too sad. The only thing is that it does look like everything is a little bit too contrasted. And that could also be because our color management here wasn't set up properly from the start. So if we did have that in rectangle 9, gamma 2.4, if we went back into the color page here, that is just something to be aware of because it did look more contrasted when we went into it here than it did here. So I would probably just go in and ease up a little bit on the contrast, something like this, and then try and export it again. And having it rendered now, let's just see. I think that gave us a little bit of a better result, having less contrast overall and just having a little bit nicer. Yes, that is how we wanted it from the start. So doing it like this and not using color space transform and making sure that it outputted the correct way into Rec. 709 just gave us a little bit more contrast when we exported it. So I needed to pull back a little bit on that, which is fine. I still think this is a pretty good result. So I hope too much that this was what you hoped for when I did it. It ended up being a lot simpler than I thought, mostly because the clip and the bitrate and the footage in general seems to be so good that it weren't really that much I needed to do. But overall, this is how we would go about it. We could do a lot more with masking, but since this clip is moving everywhere, I'm not sure it would benefit. And I think this looks good already. So I'm just gonna leave it here. If you have any questions, suggestions for other clips that we should do or something similar that's maybe even a little bit harder, let me know. I'm always happy to try it out and hopefully you guys learn something from this. So until the next time, take care.